on on them or on that particular part so uh, let me know if you are compatible with english or you want me to be a bilingual like combination of hindi and english yes. somebody is asking like app is installing no need to uh, install app you can you can directly use uh, by copy okay. so uh, let us start those those who have uh, been part of discussion before uh, probably they are uh, aware they are aware like what we have discussed i saw somebody has raised hand so uh, please tell me uh, whether you are comfortable with english or you want me to discuss in english hindi marathi uh, both both mix kind of thing so accordingly i'll start i think farin or somebody had raised the hand am i clearly audible yes yes okay english sir okay. english is fine sorry i didn't get you english english sir yeah okay so we will start with our discussion uh, what i had said before Um, uh, in our previous session is first we need to understand what is industrial psychology when we say uh, industrial psychology industrial psychology is nothing uh, but it is more related with the hr uh, policies process system uh, in any organization so uh, what what happens exactly in industrial psychology somebody joins my organization and after uh, joining the organization i need to take care of that particular employee it starts right from the recruitment from recruitment then we move to um, uh, job analysis performance management etc yeah so this is all part of the industrial psychology so till uh, till our first session we discuss about like what is the use of the job analysis for what purpose it is used from yeah somebody uh, mic is on unless you want to speak can you please put on my, uh, mute so uh, will be clear okay no, your voice is not clear okay so from exam point of view you remember this question may be asked in 20 marks and for the 20 marks sir has clearly said that you need to write between 3 pages to 4 pages so back to back maximum uh, four pages so while you do so you need to take idea we need to take idea from the notes whatever is given to us and with our own example and with our own understanding of the subject we can write so like even if you remember this table like what is the use of uh, job analysis so career development so where do you use in the career development legal issues so we have discussed on all this aspect so a detailed uh, points have been given here so you can read this Uh, you can understand and write on your own board with examples yeah so uh, now we are coming to the method of job analysis how job analysis is done so 
while doing job analysis, we need to collect a variety of information. And when you collect the information, then on the basis that we analyze. So who provide the, the uh, job uh, related information? One is the person who do the job analysis like me. I am being an HR. I'll do job analysis of the uh, candidate of the employee in the organization. Job incumbent, when I say job incumbent, the person who is coming for the job. Supervisors or the managers. Supervisors, the old terminology. So they are called now managers. So the reporting managers, they provide information about the job. And also trained observers. So what happens? Uh, anyone um, who is trained in the competency assessment, they they do this kind of job. And there are various methods available. So not part of the book, but for your information. So one of the method which is widely used in the industry is the Hayes method. So in the Hay method, a complete analysis is done. If you want, I can show you that also. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, the next question may be asked for 10 marks or 20 marks. What are the approaches to collecting um, details for the job analysis? So the first method is perform job. So in this method, what happens when somebody is doing the job, the analyst observe the task and note down and on the basis of that, uh, he uh, note down the job analysis done. Yeah. So perform job by performing uh, self. Observe when you are not performing the job, but you are observing the employees doing that. Third, you interview employees. So in my case, what happens when I uh, uh, two weeks back, I had to determine whether uh, one particular employee is completely engaged or if he or she has a free time. So I need to literally sit with her and do the interview and understand like, you know, where he or she is spending time. And on the basis of that noted down all the activities, the time spent. And on the basis of that, I come came to a conclusion that she already overloaded. She or he already over, overloaded and we need to hire another person. So that's how uh, we do by uh, interviewing employee. And last method is like administer a questionnaire to SME. SME means remember subject matter expert. Yeah, so those who are doing that particular job, particular functions. So instead of interviewing in this method, what is the difference is like we hand over the questionnaire and on the basis of questionnaire, the person respond and then we analyze on the basis of that. Yeah. So uh, this is advantage and disadvantage. I doubt this will be asked in the question uh, in the exam also. Yeah. So uh, then the method of job analysis, how uh, and the so first is data collection. So what these four you have seen is not analysis, but rather data collection. Yeah. So how do we collect data for job analysis by performing job by observing employee who are working uh, acting as an observer by interviewing employee and instead of interviewing the last method is by administering a questionnaire uh, to them and uh, on the basis of the input received we do that. So now. Once you have collected the uh, information related to that job, you need to do the analysis. So, so how do you do that? The first method of analysis is job component inventory. So the word is itself very clear. See, inventory, it means stock. So even if you're working anywhere, uh, so invent inventory means stock, so stock, is a compilation of the materials together. And when you say job component inventory, that means what is required as a component of the job, not the whole as a job. So uh, it was developed in Great Britain. So it has around 400 uh, job characteristic and this job characteristic is converted into the skill requirement. Very easy. So what is the skill? Skill is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a quality or a trait that you have that is required to perform the job. So what is skill? Using computer, that is one of the skill. Uh, another skill can be uh, like, you know, speed, how much speed you can work. So like in jewelry industry, uh, if if I want to analyze uh, work of, a, of any artisans or the carrier or the worker, the first thing we check is like, you know, how uh, accurate he uh, in terms of using his hands, uh, his motor skills, his speed, etc. So these all become the skills. 
So this JCI job component inventory, they have 400 job characteristic and this is converted into a skill requirements. Yeah. So this JCI has five use of tools and equipments like the person, how proficient he or she is in using of tools and equipment. For example, in your case, so to if you're working, that's fine. If you're not working after graduation, you want to apply for a job and I want to check your skill. The first will be the tools. So tools in terms of if you're a psychologist, how efficient you are using in the different type of uh, psychometric assessment tools, whether you can use the practical apparatus uh, uh, given in the psychological uh, laboratory. So for example, our college idol or our institute doesn't have all this facility, but in a proper psychological lab, when you uh, go to administer any subject, you sit this side of the table and uh, on the side of the table, there will be a subject. Subject means the person on whom you are uh, going to experiment. So in between there will be a wooden board. So the purpose of the wooden board is like whatever you're noting down, whatever you're writing, the person, uh, the subject should not be able to uh, see it. So how efficient you're using in this kind of tools and equipment, perceptual and physical requirement. So like if job, job may require somebody uh, should be good in height uh, or uh, somebody uh, should have a specific uh, requirements in terms of uh, eye vision or uh, eyesight, etc. Mathematics, that is calculation, whether you are able to calculate or not. So as a psychologist, again, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, check your uh, skills. So whether you can calculate the different statistics, you can, uh, whether you are able to calculate the mean value, whether you can calculate standard deviation, etc., which we will again learn in uh, terms of the uh, statistics part. Communication, how good the person is communication and their decision making and responsibility ability. So this is the uh, uh, examples given. So this is given for a clerk kind of job. So if somebody has to work uh, as a clerk, so these are the five components. So like use of tools and equipments, whether the person can use pen or not, whether the person can use telephone or not. Perceptual physio physical like the attention, whether it's a specific or the selective. Or what is their wrist, finger, hand speed? So I, I told you like when any carrier is hired, uh, any employee hard in jewelry industry it's exactly what is done. So if I'm ha uh, hiring a data entry operator, so the tools, whether he can use Excel, whether he can use any other uh, application. So <clears throat> in perce perceptual and physical, perceptual and physical requirement, whether uh, the person can, uh, you know, uh, uh, type without any difficulty, mathematics, whether the person have uh, uh, attention to detail, whether he can see like, okay, whatever I have typed, the sum is correct or uh, incorrect. He, he or she should be able to uh, do that. Communication. So here they have they have um, uh, written like provision of advice or help to people, receipt of written information. So uh, in terms of me, the communication is like whether he, uh, whether the person understand the given instruction by, by the different department or not. That is the communication skill as a component is communication and skill is ability to interpret the communication given. So decision making and uh, responsibility, whether the person can uh, take, make decision on the basis of data available or he always need a support. So on the basis of that, then I uh, hire a candidate. Now coming to you in exam, even if you forget like, you know, as it is like this, just remember for job analysis, uh, the first method is uh, job component inventory. Yeah, in job component inventory, there are five uh, components and each skill is defined on the basis of this component. So you just you should just be able to remember the component. Use of tools and equipments, just keep in mind. So what is use of tools and uh, compo uh, equipment? What is the perceptual and physical requirements? What is mathematics? Uh, what is communication? And what is decision making? And in this skill, not necessary that you need to remain uh, remember as it is like this, you just connect this to any job. If you are working, just connect that way. If you can connect that way. So now uh, take an example of any professor who is teaching us uh, at IDOL giving. So what is their occupancy, uh, uh, their, uh, their occupation? Their occupation is teaching. So you can write a table example of frequently needed skill for 
instead of British clerical uh, occupations, you can just write for a professor. So this five component use of tools and equipment. So imagine uh, any one of you can answer, be it uh, Farin, be it uh, Priya uh, or uh, Charles Raj. I do not know what is your real name. Real name. So, so if you need to uh, write skills required on the basis of these five components for a professor or a lecturer, what it could be? Anyone? Hello. I hope uh, I am audible. Yes, yes, Kovind, you are audible. Yes. Yeah. So, Raj, can you can you uh, tell on the basis of these five components, what will be the skills required uh, for a, a lecturer or a professor? So use of tools and equipment. What do you think? What kind of uh, tools and equipments he or she should be able to use? Uh, is it is it on the screen that you're referring to? Yeah, so in left left hand side, you see the component. Okay. So what we are right, discussing right. is like job analysis for job analysis. First task, what we need to do is a data collection. So Correct. we have seen how to collect data one uh, by doing job itself. So do we know like how much time it is going to take? What does it need to perform the job? Second, uh, by observing observation. So some other do the work. We just write observation. So uh, if you ask me how I did. So uh, three years back, I had a big challenge for uh, any HR professional like me. The challenge is for those people who are working in creative field, designer sort of things. So for them, it's a more mental job, so it takes longer time. And we wanted to calculate like to complete a certain design, how much time they should take. So actually I sat with them. I asked them to perform the job and 10 to 12 times uh, they repeated the job and I noted down the time. So how do we, uh, so it's an advanced level, but still, you know, for uh, all of your understanding I'm sharing. So how, how do we do, this is also called, uh, you know, um, uh, HR language or the industrial engineering language or industrial psychology language. This is called time motion st studies. So in that we actually see like okay to perform that job. What is the minimum time somebody had take, taken and what is the maximum time somebody has taken? And then we calculate the median time. So we said the best time is the lowest time. Worst time is the highest time and accepted time is the median time. Yes, yeah, so mean median that we will uh, learn more in the uh, statistical part. So now uh, you have this component. So we, we talked about, uh, you know, by observation, then we uh, third method is by interviewing. Fourth method is by giving a questioner where we don't interview, we give the question and then collect That's a method of data collections. Now, since we have collected the data about the job, now it's time to analyze the job. So, uh, so there are various methods and uh, one of the method is uh, job component inventory method, JCI method. So in JCI method, the data is collected and this data is divided into five major components. Use of tools and equipment, perceptual and physical requirement, mathematics, communication, decision making. Now you need to write answer in the exam. Probably will not remember this table as it is, but you need to, what you need to remember really is these five components. So now, uh, imagine about any of the professor or lecturer who has taught you um, before uh, uh, this uh, BA uh, in a full time setup or if you have attended practical or you can imagine like what is required. So when, when you talk about use of tools and equipment, so what do you think? What kind of tools uh, and equipment skill required in a lecturer or professor considering today's time? Maybe the tools and equipments covering for a lecturer could be uh, uh, like, you know, the stationary. Yeah. Uh, more to do in terms of, yes. you know, how he can, yeah, in terms of uh, the materials, I would say. Uh, the, yeah, so audio video materials you should be able to operate on Zoom because all students may not be face to face. They should be able to use online meeting tools. 
like one we are using now yeah so use of speech, right, right, right. use of different different audio video mm -hmm. equipment so perceptual physical requirement so uh, should there, there be selective attention no a professor need a complete holistic attention they need to see like who is engaged who is disengaged kind of thing otherwise he will not be effective right so uh, in terms of wrist finger hand speed not required in a professor but what is required is a mental ability presence of mind if somebody any student can ask any question randomly should be able to answer right yes yeah so mathematics similarly they should be able to calculate they should be able to so, so somebody is teaching us practical so on on a fingertip they should be able to uh, calculate in the things and tell us so if we have taken a wrong mean value they can, they could they could be able to say that sorry this mean value is wrong it should not be so high right communication effective communication uh, ability to uh, get feedback and give feedback yeah and decision making they should be a person who can take make decision immediately so this is all required uh, there so this is all about job uh, uh, job component inventory jci the second met method is functional job analysis see when you read the word even if you don't remember during uh, exam or exactly so on the basis of that you can you you should be able to write some something so like the problem of this uh, book is like you know functional job analysis is a technique that involves observation and interview with smes now somewhere they have given the meaning of smes so if you are uh, a very very fresh student not working anywhere probably you may understand this as a sme as a subject matter expert but a person like me when you use the word sme so in my day to day work i use word sme for uh, uh, small and medium enterprise yeah so that's that's the problem with the book so but you should remember yeah functional job analysis that involves observation and interviews with the smes instead of using the word smes you can use the person doing the job or the person whose job analysis we are doing got it any doubt on this hello hello am i audible no no doubt so. yes sir So going back to uh, in USA, the U.S. Department of Labor utilized so. They The word itself is very, very clear. When we say task analysis, it is, it is nothing more than the day-to-day -day job. On daily basis, they are doing analysis of the same. And it's, so uh, I don't stretch. I, I won't stretch much on this uh, job analysis method part. The next, which we need to see is the job evaluation. Yeah. So in exam, question may be asked like, 
what do you understand by the job evaluation uh, share with example so when we say job evaluation yeah so job evaluation it is a method and it is done for the uh, purpose of determining the job salary level so it is a quantitative method remember when we say quantitative method or technique that means it involves uh, numbers qualitative data text quantitative numbers so uh, so job evaluation the primary purpose of job evaluation is to uh, determine the job salary level so for example if my company has 10 different people have 10 different people and everybody is getting different salary now i need to uh, define the band like who should get what kind of salary and for this i'll always use job evaluation method yeah so uh, any job analysis it is incomplete without job evaluation the evaluation job evaluation has to be there yeah so in job uh, evaluation what we do is like we try to find out if anybody does any kind of mistake in the job that is error so what will be the outcome so that is called consequences of error on the job so education required what is the education i need for this kind of job what kind of responsibility required in that job and what kind of skill required so remember in job evaluation there are four factors consequences of an error education required responsibility and skill required so now uh, i had uh, hr in a jewelry manufacturing company we hire a lot of uh, uh, labor or the carrier so for that one of the uh, job is called setter the setter is a diamond setter so whatever uh, diamond ring or the necklace you buy uh, on the basis of carrot they put diamond there so similarly those person who is responsible for the casting they have to see like what is the customer's order how many gram gold uh, weight and what is uh, uh, what is the diamond set has to be there suppose if he uh, use excess gold customer may refuse to pay for the excess gold or he may return the order the consequences will be huge because this, again this has to go through melting so that is calculated uh, diamond while uh, setting the diamond if he breaks the diamond so that's a cost because that is a loss so that's how it is calculated education required for that kind of job i do not need anybody um, a graduate sort of thing even somebody stay in pass or fail that is perfectly fine for me responsibility their responsibility will be purely pure uh, completing the jewelry pieces so like uh, a diamond setter uh, they have to uh, fix 2700 small small diamonds uh, in the jewelry in a day so uh, uh, so that's what um, uh, is a responsibility and skill required skill required is like attention to uh, details uh, very strong hand uh, and ensure that a diamond doesn't fall uh, after setting is done so that is the example yeah and on the basis of that a compensation is uh, decided yeah, so this is done by a panel yeah so first panel do this responsibility second panel again uh, do this in a quantitative scale so again so they have uh, each each component has to be uh, divided into points and on the points point of that then they uh, they will finally do a evaluation and then they come to a final conclusion like you know how much uh, uh, the person should get so now if you read the text you will get in uh, get more examples like doctor hospital uh, physician yeah nurses so on this example you can uh, do that yeah. any any question on this so govind i had a question like uh, what is the difference between job analysis and job evaluation it is the same right no no uh, job uh, job analysis it is done from the understanding overall job so like uh, if I need to do a job analysis for HR head, I'll see like, you know, what does this job involve? What is his day-to-day -day responsibility? Out of this, 
which is the most important responsibility primary responsibility what are the secondary responsibility and also it includes job specification so job when i say job analysis so job analysis will include the complete job details and what the person really need to perform mm, and job right. specification yeah, job mm. specification defines what is required to complete that job for example to be an hr head what is the uh, things required so it it differs from one company to another company it's not like teaching job like in mumbai university there are 8 lakhs plus students there are 100 of colleges so whether this is uh, a bhavan's college or a bnn college or thana college everywhere the professor has to do same job but in terms of uh, your real corporate world each organization is different so maybe uh, a it company hr head is job requirement is very different compared to somebody who is working in a manufacturing setup or a bpo setup or an educational setup so job evaluation talks about the responsibilities job specification talks about what the person need to perform the job for example a ideal uh, hr head job specification will be at least mba uh, in hr mb or msw in hr or master of personal management or master of labor management that is the bare minimum qualification required minimum uh, 15 to 20 years experience in so if the factory has a union setup then union kind of environment if i am working in it with the young generation uh, further uh, requirement should be able to uh, discuss with the management the top line and bottom line when say top line so profit revenue bottom line my expenses so what i am getting so this is job specification now answering a question job evaluation evaluation uh, uh, evaluation is more about determining the salary in job uh, job analysis we do not think from the salary perspective but when i do the job uh, evaluation i see ki like okay on the basis of uh, this parameters yeah who should get uh, what salary so that is job, done in the job evaluation so in job analysis i will not express like you know how many hours will be required to put for this job i'll just say this is the primary responsibility and this is the uh, secondary responsibility but in job evaluation i'll uh, quantify it i'll quantify each work so like 20 points for the error got it so if you go go uh, back to the notes yeah so see here so consequences of the error on the job so in job uh, analysis i'll not do that but job, job evaluation i'll do it so what will happen if somebody performs some, somebody does error in that job yeah so imagine somebody is doing a financial analyst job somebody is doing a mutual fund advisory uh, a fund manager kind of role if that person do a mistake in a calculation the consequences will be huge imagine somebody working as a nuclear scientist i work in a reactor what will be the consequences of his error that will be huge compared to i am working as an hr head if i do a mistake in climbing a ladder nothing at least the uh, uh, some sort of thing will happen but uh, not like it will take away somebody's life so in job evaluation we we measure on the basis of these four parameters so what is the consequence of the job uh, if error is done what is the education required what is the responsibility required what is the skill required so how do we do so tomorrow if my management asks okay govin we want to hire a product development uh, manager so can you please find a uh, cost for that okay uh, now tell me uh, what is the uh, consequence of the job what is the qualification you require so if you just need a graduate you will get it cheaper but if you say that you need mba from iim or you need uh, a pgdm from the indian in institute of packaging packaging management the cost will be huge got it the job evaluation is purely pure for the uh, determining salary purpose yeah clear more question hello no go in thank you thank you no no questions thanks so so i hope i uh, i am able to clarify uh, the difference between job analysis job specification and job evaluation yeah so these these are the important points yes yes yeah thank you yeah
I don't see this is an important point setting salary level. So this is more about you know uh, there is always a inequality of the salary uh, between a male and female, even in India, even now. Whatever the book say doesn't matter, but uh, there there cannot be same salary due to certain reason. Uh, there are equal salary also. There is a difference in the salary also. So yeah, so this talks about all these things. So not much on that. So always remember when you read. Uh, read introduction and read summary. So this will give you a uh, better clarity. Okay. So uh, from this, from exam perspective, what I feel that what is job analysis? Explain in details. This question may come. Uh, write in details of purpose of job analysis. So both of this may be combined and asked as 120 mark question. And there's a sure shot. One question is coming about a job analysis. So uh, study this well. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, subject matter expert setting salary level, etc. Uh, uh, will come now we are coming to next topic performance appraisal. Yeah. So as I said, you know, uh, when we uh, study organizational psychology or industrial psychology, it is called I slash O industrial or organizational psychology. So it is nothing more than uh, all the activities which involves attracting talent, nurturing talent, developing talent, managing talent. So when I say talent, all of you who are uh, present in the class right now, either you are working or you are going to work. Yeah. So when you when you complete your graduation, probably uh, my team may have a requirement for a, a entry level position in HR or uh, I may need a counselor. And the first thing I, I'll do is I'll put an advertisement. I'll ask you to apply. You uh, guys may apply uh, for the position. I'll evaluate, screen the candidate. I'll take the interview. So uh, after interview the recruitment, uh, this, this is the recruitment process. And then I'll select you. I'll offer you and you join. So when you join, uh, after you spend some time in the organization, I need to also evaluate your performance. So this performance appraisal is nothing more than what has been your key responsibility, what had been your key deliverables. Against of that, where do you stand? How did you perform in your job? So that is called performance appraisal. Yeah. So answering in a short. So like, why do we appraise? employee it is because i need to see for what positions for what role for what responsibility i have hired someone and where the person stand whether the person is uh, up to the mark whether the person need improvement whether the person need further intervention for the development so these all things required and that's why we have to apprise employee unfortunately uh, those who are not aware about HR processes, they think apprise employee. That means just for the increment purpose. No, increment is one of the purpose, but increment is not the sole purpose of performance appraisal. The purpose of performance appraisal is far greater. It's all about um, evaluating person on the person's competency. I'll not say ability, competency for uh, psychologists. This will be a better word. Uh, competency is combination of skills. Yeah, so like. Communication skills. Is a skill. But strategy communication skill. That's a competency. How a person strategically communicate. Yeah. So that's why we need to apprise employee. And we need to take administrative decisions. So in old times, what used to happen? Uh, have has anyone of you heard bell curve? Yes, yes, yes. Bell curve, right? Yeah. So it comes in a bell shape like this. Completely like a bell kind of shape. So it says that the distribution of employee is like 10% employee will be a super performer, excellent performer, high potential. 10% will be their job. And rest 70 80% people are. 
so that means they are neither high performer nor lower performer so they can be uh, they can am i audible yes yes or yes i lost the paper so i was giving example so imagine imagine mumbai university uh, idol uh, we are around 240 students and uh, tomorrow idol decide that you know uh, we are we are not going to evaluate you on the on your performance and each one of uh, you will be declared pass and you will get a pass certificate do you think that will be a fair decision no yeah because we want uh, to be evaluated on the basis of how we performed in our uh, semester and exams right and we want percentage of that so that will be a kind of and, and also whether we meet the objective of the course or not so so that's why similar similar way this is our performance appraisal similarly in any organization they also need to do a performance appraisal for the administrative reason they need to find out like whether uh the person uh, has made the objective or not so same thing employee development and feedback uh, as i said performance appraisal is not just about your increment it's about development and feedback okay so govind is although govind is working as an hr head now but suppose tomorrow organization has a growth plan of 2x can govind manage his role uh, if we grow twice no So if not, then what kind of uh, development uh, plan Govind needs to uh, have? So Govind may need a training in communication, strategy communication. Uh, probably Govind need a training uh, in stakeholder management. Probably Govind need a training in labor laws, because we are going to grow, and at that time we may have to comply with more labor laws. So this is all the development uh, and feedback thing. So this is one of the objective of the. performance appraisal yeah and also research research in the sense like what is happening why certain people are performing well why uh, others are not uh, performing so performance criteria this includes what we are going to learn is characteristic of criteria what is the criteria what is the complexity in criteria what is the dynamism in the criteria and what is the uh, contextual performance so that's what uh, we are going to do so see this is again easy you imagine if you don't remember anything during exam just imagine what will happen if idol doesn't evaluate performance of its students yeah so then you can write so again you do not need to go by book go if you go by book you will get an idea but you can write all this in your own word without uh, any hesitation so that's why i said industrial psychology is very 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 easy it's not that uh, that much tough yeah so this 3.1 says that the first questions we identify in the justification for organization to essentially evaluate the employees performance and productivity in a significant manner performance assessment is indeed a time consuming task that most management uh, management managers and their subordinate most dislike subtly why 
therefore often for the most part of the fairly actual for all intents and purposes large organizations mostly evaluate employee job satisfaction performance at most once every year so uh, that's the problem with the book it's copy pasted from somewhere any kind of uh, performing organization any kind of uh, organization which is growing they never do a performance assessment once in a year rather they do at least four times in a year i am part of uh, doing performance management a performance assessment of a large mnc which has business in entire middle east and the uh, gulf countries every time i sit with along uh, along with around 50 to 70 different people including managers including country head and every quarter we give them the performance feedback not the year of the end so Uh, again you can read from the book you can write that way uh, why do we apprise employee because if we do not apprise the employee we do not know what is happening imagine uh, so i have uh, uh, just to share i have studied in different university different universities pondicherry we used to have like idol uh, semester end exams still i uh, i had a uh, and a percentage to get a job but when i uh, when i pursued same mba from nmi ms kind of institute nmi ms doesn't believe in uh, doing a term end exam kind of thing in nmi ms mba uh, you have uh, your mid term you have your quiz you have your group presentation you have your individual presentation you have your uh, uh, research uh, kind of thing that you need to do so in or trimester that is four months time at least four to six different evaluation pattern and used to actual uh, get feedback and due to this you could know like you know uh, where you are lacking where you need to improve where you need to focus that helps so if it is done end of the year in any organization employee has nothing he has only lost the year suppose my organization has decided organization has decided that we want to reach 1000 crore this year and we have already divided like who is going to perform what in order to achieve the 1000 crore and if i do end of the year i have lost the time that's why i do quarterly review we do a monthly review we share financials with people so this helps me to improve in the area where i am lacking so my team uh, who had uh, 2.3 2.4 out of 5 less than 50% performance it has improved to 3.3 now so almost 66% of the performance uh, required performance yeah so uh, that's why uh, we need to apprise the employee to give them feedback to uh, make them aware like where they need improvement yeah so it is so you can write on your own word so why do we apprise employee first is for the administrative decision hmm? several administrative and managerial decisions we have to take so for example tcs or the infosys decided or wipro decided that they will ask around say 8000 people to leave the job why because if they wait for the whole year and the employee becomes non performance they become a cost so that's why to take such kind of administrative decision it is important to have the performance uh, appraisal yeah so if you see here several administrative and managerial decision which impact employees are dependent basically at least to some extent on their ability to do the job in significant way in a subtle way contrary to common assumptions most major organizations utilize job performance as the foundation for a variety of notably def definitely negative and particularly positive actions so negative action uh, so like demotion ter uh, termination etc so that i already told you as well as some organizational have policies that specifically demand the firing of unsatisfactory performing worker so any organization doesn't have this kind of uh, policy but yeah it's very clear so in my organization if i found any carrier is not performing we have given them productivity target if they do not perform we have given the gold loss or the metal loss or those kind of target and if they don't perform we take a call is sorry this is not working so you may find out your way as the agreed this is your notice period we are paying and you may leave so this kind of administrative decision can be taken only after the performance appraisal yeah so positive action includes 
like you know uh, giving them increment uh, giving them a different kind of job role uh, promoting them to a different role uh, giving them a kind of rewards and recognition sort of things so for this performance uh, appraisal is required so it's very very simple means you can write a full page on that yeah you can you not necessarily that you will write from your like civil service government employee can uh, sort of things government personnel so what you can you can write uh, as a student of psychology is like in private sector this decision making is easy because they do a periodical review and database but in public sector this is done on the basis of the confidential report and lot of laws has to be followed so that's why we 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 see in our experience we see that there are inefficient employee in the railway counter so you must have seen uh, somebody in the railway counter taking 10 minutes to punch a ticket right so not efficient in private if the person was doing that he would have been removed so taking such so again uh, summarize the whole this thing in administrative decision there will be positive decision there will be negative decision positive decision is about their increment positive decision is about their job uh, Uh, not not only increment their job promotion. Uh, this is about the developmental uh, plan for them. So these are all the positive actions. So negative actions like demotion, demoting an employee, uh, decrease pay cut uh, in an employee, uh, or the termination, the at worst termination of an employee. So in one of my past role, on the basis of the uh, this performance evaluation. actually i made sure that the employee get to at least 50% pay cut because for 3 years his revenue was very very uh, poor yeah so that's how uh, this is done second purpose is development and feedback so as i said any kind of performance appraisal is not just for the increment it is for the development also because during uh, during performance uh, appraisal uh, we give feedback there is feedback for managers there is a feedback for employee also and both the feedback helps each other to grow we call it feed powers yeah so um, so like we can give them feed so in one of the uh, review one employee suddenly asked the question like what is our pay band what is our grade band because he perceived like he is a super performer still he uh, he has not been given any uh, not only increment but also promotion so the manager who was a national head clearly said that see look you are an excellent performer you really do your job well you network well but the challenge is till now what is not visible is how you convert your network into uh, business uh, business prospects so you really need to learn that so this is the development feedback given on the basis of that the employee uh, can perform on those areas and become ready for the next role so that's why uh, this appraisal feedback is very very important and last is research yeah many organization they constantly uh, involve in those kind this kind of research to find out like why uh, this thing happened so as an hr so what i do like every year i see like why uh, this uh, uh, performance is not happening why uh certain uh, people are absent more uh, that way so we do lot of data analysis data churning and then we come to a decision this helps on decision making so similarly here if you see several, several of the activities of generally professional industrial and organized psychologist are focused on improving employee work performance or so they generally thought industrial and organized psychologist efforts may be focused on creating much better equipment employing the right candidate empowering staff and educating and training employee which would be highly crucial on a subtle way in a subtle way so job performance data for example may be used as a criteria against which some activities can for the most of the uh, most part be assessed subtly in a very major way so similarly what we do we analyze productivity data of employee and then we come to a conclusion like after 40 years of the age many carriers cannot perform well so now we need to take a call what to do so then we move them to a trainer Uh, to become a trainer so they become a trainer and they started uh, training uh, new carrier lot so that's how it happens so the research helps us to understand like why this is happening and what is what action we can take yeah.
next is uh, performance criteria so performance criteria is nothing much more than you know what criteria we decide for each performance so this book is more more a uh, theoretical uh, uh, point of thing in practical world so nobody read like you know actual uh, criteria and uh, th theoretical criteria and kind of thing we in simple language call it kpi key performance indicator we get, give the rating scale on the basis of that uh, and people uh, perform that way uh, let me try to show you if i can show Yeah, just sharing file just give me a minute so if you see this file so this is how we define this is for a ceo uh, kind of profile yeah this is or so you do not do it to go to complexity of this so this is the main responsibility area what i am expecting from the person i am expecting 2.5 percent year on year growth uh, so here you see what is the criteria so, so if he uh, does three years business plan he get one so In business 62 CR, so that way he will get the criteria. So this is the actual criteria. So when you see in the book, we have to we have to go by book only. We have to write from the big book. books person. criteria can be two type one is the actual second one is the theoretical okay theoretical criteria is like a very theoretically constructed thing the actual uh, criteria is like you know more uh, so let us take an example here job artist can be a uh, painter can be a sculpture anything so when you see theory so theory it doesn't uh, really quantify in terms of uh, job so it says create great works of art that is theoretical not very clear actual criteria art expert so the art art expert so somebody is a painter so all famous painters will come they will evaluate and they will give the rating so that is the actual criteria so insurance sales person so theoretical criteria is more a job so his job is to sell insurance the person has actually performed or not how will i do so in actual criterion monthly sales how many sales he has brought from the this thing just a question any one of you work yes sir i i do raj me aisha who work farin real real so what is your job profile i am basically into it recruitment okay so in in when i uh, when you say it recruitment yeah mm. so uh, if we have to go by uh, uh, this theoretical aspect of this book so mm. your job is recruitment mm. right yes. so 
theoretical criterion will be what the theoretical criterion is uh, higher uh, people maybe a java developer maybe a dotnet developer uh, maybe a sap abap or whatever technology you are hiring uh, hiring so that is your theoretical criterion but your actual criterion is what so one can be hiring time tat with a 100% within tat a 100% on time recruitment or uh, cost hiring per cost it can be 19000 it can be 35000 whatever has been decided got it so so again for to everyone please remember uh, priyal since you are working so you can now put more uh, thought in your answer not necessary that you need to remember this job job theoretical criterion actual criterion etc you just need to understand the concept job theoretical criterion actual criterion so job means basically a role it can be you can write it recruiter you can write a java developer you can write uh, admin manager uh, you can write uh, housekeeping you can write anything you can write trainer you can write a project manager you can write project lead anything so theoretical criterion you will just write a job description in actual criterion you try to quantify it got it yes so even if you write 10 examples your one page will be completely filled right hmm. so so theoretical again job is your role for what you are going to hire a person theoretical criterion a more a job description one liner in job description actual criterion is more a quantifiable, quantifiable terms of thing so like it recruiter theoretical criterion hire people uh, actual criterion monthly hiring so that way you can define more yeah yes that is thank you thank you can read more from the book so we'll get sorry right sir thank you thank you for making it clear yeah yeah most welcome so more you can uh, read in terms of contamination deficiency and relevance yeah so i won't talk much on that so if you have any questions because due to time we can't spend so much uh, time on discussion it's already 10:30 so uh, we will discuss it tomorrow so just go through that yeah uh, in performance management uh, i think more than this chapter uh, we will have more more uh, from this this chapter performance appraisal second uh, so we will uh, we will uh, uh, discuss about this tomorrow yeah there will be 100% question going to be asked from the second part performance appraisal second so uh, we will dis discuss this tomorrow probably at 9 o'clock i i will be traveling uh, maybe i will be in between to mumbai and surat but let's see if i get uh, connectivity in train that's fine otherwise i think 9 9 o'clock we can connect so is that fine for everyone yes so before closing any questions anything that that you didn't understand or you need clarity on that no questions okay. though uh, the cbcs pattern is uh, first time for us uh in last sessions i have shared shared few past question paper the annual pattern so tomorrow we will again go through that okay. because more or less more or less i am sure uh, the most important questions uh, will be coming from there only yeah so we will see like whatever we have discussed today and and i want this to be more discussion rather than a one side kind of conversation so please uh, read the performance appraisal second that is uh, chapter 4 from the unit 1 okay um, this page number 4 yeah number is read 44 okay. 44 from the book so okay. 44 to uh, ahead uh, the complete appraisal part we will uh, study we will read and uh, discuss tomorrow so it should be more discussion kind of thing so if you anywhere you uh, 44 to uh, 58 58 59 Yeah. So, uh, yeah, please uh, read that. So it should be more discussion. If you anywhere, if you feel that you know 
uh, I was uh, inconsistent or not correct, uh, you can correct me also because it's a co-learning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very thank much you, for your sir. time. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thanks, Govin. Thank you. Thanks a lot Thanks, here. Sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So please address each other by their name, including me. So, <laughs> so that will be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Govin. Thank you, sir. Thank you.